<laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands now. <laughs> little case that I keep clicking. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> all did the same thing. It's like Tal- Talladega Nights, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that should be one of the. That should be one of the uh, categories we discuss is how our, our personalities are really just a combination of movies that we've seen, yeah. and that's where our humor yeah. is based. It's yeah, an amalgamation of every movie we've ever seen. <laughs> Absolutely, none of this is original. It's all movie quotes and, and other people's ideas. So don't think we're funny by any means. Probably You're looking for original like, content. <laughs> You're in the wrong place, bub. I feel like uh, my image looks completely different than everyone else's. It must be from my, because I'm on a mobile device and you guys are on laptops. But, I mean, I've got, like, this, and I can't hide my hands. They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you're a little farther. Uh, now I look like I have – look at look how huge my hands are compared to <laughs> – the farther farther you get away from the screen, the bigger your body looks and the smaller your head looks. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'll go ahead and download it to my, uh, my laptop. <laughs> All right. Well, this is episode number three. And today we're uh, doing our weekly conversation about our entrepreneurship and our business development and what we're doing or what we're not doing. And we have a special guest. Um, she's going to be joining us in a few minutes. But um, I thought I would just kind of start with what I've been doing for the last week. Not a whole lot, but um, you know, I like crafts. And so I, I was working on building a uh, craft that's basically a wooden six pack holder. So it holds beer bottles. And it's something I started a few years ago and I made a few and and uh, I thought, well, I tried making one and, and see if I could sell it on Etsy. And then I, I published that other, that lighted, that lighted bottle uh, base that, that you, uh, Scott and I were talking about and I published that on Etsy. So trying to add some woodcraft to my Etsy site and then uh, kind of related to what Kelly's going to come on and talk about, which is movie making and stuff. Um, I like to write in my spare time. So I was, I was actually writing a movie script. And so um, Kelly's going to help me with it. And maybe eventually with all of her Hollywood connections, I might be able to give a movie script to somebody. That'd be exciting. So that's what I've been doing this week. Uh, anyone else? Who wants to follow the guy that built all that stuff and wrote a movie script? I, I really don't want <laughs> well, to. Just to, to touch on that uh, for a second, uh, I do have com- some concerns. If it took you three years to make a beer bottle holder, there may be some production issues. <laughs> you go- you're going to run into some profitability <laughs> problems. It's the supply chain. It's crazy right now. <laughs> I know it's tough to get parts around here, but come on. <laughs> With the cost of lumber, that's going to be a four hundred dollar <laughs> beer bottle. <laughs> I actually cut all the pieces and then put it in a, a hobby box and like forgot about it. And I was digging through some stuff over the weekend. I had a long vacation at home last week, and I was digging through stuff. And I'm like, oh wow, I halfway did this. Maybe I should finish. I remember, it. I remember you showing us that when you're. Well, I mean, did you have a plan for it too? Yeah. Yeah, I remember you showing us that when you were drawing that out. Hmm. Anyway, I didn't really, um, I didn't research any more on uh, last week's topic, the <clears throat> the airfield B and B. Just haven't gone any further with that yet. I mean, that's a long term goal anyway, so that'll be years you worth of call research. It I did air air B and B air 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 B and B. So I didn't really, uh, I didn't look into the A B B anymore, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I did. I did do a little bit of research. There are some. Just to go back on last week's topic, there are some already out there. There's, a, there's actually quite a few of them already out there, and they kind of my my plan or scheme. But they are major resorts, and uh, yeah. even even the ones that are single owned on owner, owner's property, they are quite nice. So I'll have to have to come back to that and then yeah. come up with a a sound business plan and what we can capture there. But uh, mostly what I, uh, I worked on this week, 
today specifically, um, being on duty, we had people come by and talk to us about retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, we already have a pension system through the city, uh, but we have also many other investment opportunities through the city. Um, so we had uh, we had the opportunity to talk to a specialist here today about Roth IRAs, IRAs, 457s, um, and the things that we have access through the city here. Um, so just to kind of diversify, you know, um, my investments in our portfolio, Caroline and I together. And it's another thing to consider too, you know, I'm kind of waiting, I've been waiting to put any extra money into another vehicle or another fund like that, just because uh, Caroline's career is starting now too, and she's going to have access to 401k and, and pretty decent benefits where she'll be at <clears throat> that. And uh, really, uh, you know, having those two things, a 401k pension system, and possibly one other thing I really wanted to to talk to you guys about uh, diversifying too, you know, I mean, we continue on this, these, these different business ideas or investment properties or uh, things to get into, you know, I really think diversification is really important. So even though we have access to all these retirement plans through uh, Caroline and I, both of our jobs, uh, um, I don't, I don't know if it, what, what the best thing for us in the long term would be, you know, but both of us hold on to those retirements and then try to try to also, acquire rental properties and or work on a business together or a retirement idea. Um, yeah, you so do, kinda, Josh, you do 401k and stuff like that too, right? 401k, I do IRAs. Um, we do, we try to be pretty diversified. I've even got one annuity um, that it has a Roth IRA inside of it. So try to stay diversified. I think the most, uh, I mean, my advice for you, you're still young enough and, you know, obviously talk to a financial advisor, but what I would do is uh, mutual funds, like mutual funds diversified into four different categories. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of mutual funds, especially for the long haul, um, mutual funds and real estate, real estate. I'm not there yet, but it's definitely in my plans for my portfolio at this point mutual funds is where it's at. Um, a lot of people will say, well, you can't beat the S and P, but I've had like a almost 20% return over the last three years on all my mutual funds. So as long as you're paying attention, you can, you know, do very well with them. Yeah. And I do like uh, mutual funds over your traditional IRA, but this 457, this 457 Roth is nice because I mean, it has the same tax benefits as the traditional IRA. But we have access to the money at any time with no penalty. We do not have to wait until 59 and a half to make a withdrawal. Um, so having access to those funds without taking a penalty is a huge, huge plus. That's what we kind of thought about maybe setting up as a college fund for the kids. Um, you know, go ahead and start dumping into that. And then we also found out that there's a kind of like, a, I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's a catch-up program, essentially. Um, but when I'm three years away from actual retirement, if I haven't vested in the past years, the maximums each year that's allowable into the 457, uh, they actually allow you to double your contributions of the maximum allowed in those last three years. And essentially we could dump, uh, the maximum for this 457 is 21,500. Uh, so essentially you can double that in your last three years before you retire and you can dump 43,000 into it and, um, and continue to let it grow afterwards. Mm -hmm. But um, there's just there's some tax benefits and then uh, match, maximum contributions and then the also the the ability to take it out without penalties is uh, a major benefit. So I'll definitely have to have you guys look at the uh, the fine print and tell me what you think about that because 457 seems to be a really a really nice asset for uh, investment from the city. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, but yeah, diversification. You know, I think we'll probably also add on to our retirement plan with uh, Caroline's 401k because they, you know, the company she'll be with matches quite significantly. And then when she moves up, um, it's very significant. Uh, her, her dad, the company that she's going to be working for her dad, uh, he gets a hundred percent match of what he puts in. And I did the maximum is a lot. I can't remember what it was, wow. but it's a lot. So that's what I kind of I've been I've been looking at uh, different aspects of of uh, our uh, 
retirement and and, and future you know, rather than just the business ideas that we talked about. I think it's just as important or more, Absolutely. more important. It's, it's like locked in, like you don't have to do anything. It's effortless and you're saving money and making money on interest and stock appreciation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just a piggy bank that does work for you. Definitely want to at least have some of that in your portfolio, whether, whether you go for a business or real estate, whatever it is, you need to invest a little bit at least, whether it be just something simple, index fund, mutual fund, or dividend stocks, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm getting across here is I really want to diversify into several different different things, whether it's retirement plans like that, my pension, maybe a little bit of precious metals, real estate. I mean, just have a dabble in a little bit of everything. Just so we're not putting, uh, you know, so we're not restricted and we're not uh, putting all our eggs in the basket. Yeah. Plus, and I've seen so many people that that you know put all their money into one, just a four hundred one k. That's it, you know, and then then it tanks and they lose so much of their retirement. We found out today that the number one age for bankruptcy right now is sixty seven. Uh, so people are barely able to, this is according to this person, they're barely able to afford uh, their payments on, they don't have enough retirement and they're not able to afford their Medicare. Um, and so to keep the government from touching their 401ks or the annuities or whatever they may have, uh, because there there can be tax liens put onto that, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're um, claiming bankruptcy instead. Wow. And and that's that's a, that's the number one age right now for bankruptcy is in your 60s. Scary. Hi, Kelly. Hello, Kelly. Hello, welcome. Kelly. Hi. Hi, special guest. It's me. <laughs> uh, Kelly's Hello, our special Kelly. guest, and uh, she's going to be talking to us about the entertainment business. Which she's heavily involved in. But before we start, uh, Josh or Scott, anything you want to add? No, we can go ahead and get started on it. Yeah, I've read a lot as far as an entrepreneurial standpoint for them the last week, but I have been really trying to focus on, you know, I think I mentioned last time I have an eight month old baby. And so it's been, um, mentally taxing and so this last week sarah and i kind of my wife sarah we kind of uh came up with plans to help us mentally and get back into physical fitness which is something that's important to us so we built out schedules and things like that for the week and so that was a big win for us uh over the past week yeah self-care is huge it's really really important i mean you know you can't make any of this work if you don't if you don't take care of yourself and you're stressed or tired and beyond you know, your capability. So that's and good I have for you. been all of those. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, you look great though. You know, thank you. Look you. Beautiful. Thank you. You're a handsome that. man. I wore the hat so you can't see the bags <laughs> under my eyes. Oh, is that what the shadowing is about? Shadow okay. is for. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Put the light to your back, wear a hat. We can't see. So you're just again. going for a mysterious vibe. <laughs> I, that's part of you know, the mystique. <laughs> you've got a wonderful background too i'm not sure what all's going on back there but i can definitely see some uh, mountain biking helmets and books yeah literature books yeah it looks really great <laughs> like to read helmet, that helmet is uh retired from from our uh moab trip it was mm-hmm. really the last like the last big trip i wore it on so it's in retirement all right it's that all right. Well, we want I wanted to have a special guest. This is our first special guest. Kelly is you're our inaugural guest. You're the very first person we've had on this this YouTube podcast. You're the most special sure. guest. So be proud. Welcome. I feel honored. <laughs> yeah. You're you're in the entertainment business. You help make movies. You help make music. You know much more about all of that than any of us. And uh, we thought, well, maybe that will inspire somebody to um, do something similar to what you're doing. I know, I know you have special little circumstances, but you've learned a lot. We're wondering if you could just share kind of like what it is that you're doing, but you don't have to say anything you don't want to say, but 
tell us what you're doing at the moment. At the moment, um, I'm working on a movie. Yeah. I am, um, yeah, in the process of um, developing a pitch to a movie director. Cool. Yeah, did that. In the process of that, it's you're, fun. you're writing a script, you're writing treatments, you're talking to people in Hollywood. Yeah. So what, go, what all goes into coming up with the pitch for the director, you know? Um, let's see. We, um, first we have to uh, write a brief summary of our, our idea for a movie. So we have um, three acts to the movie, the opening, the middle, and the, and the end. Um, it's, it's a biopic. So a lot of it is historical um, facts and with a little bit of fiction thrown in for some drama, entertainment. You know, the history is not very entertaining. So um, we throw in some fictitious characters and um, scenes for entertainment purposes. So that's what we're working on right now. Cool. That's good. When do you guys expect to uh, move forward? I mean, now that you've, have you secured the director? We, we, we know that the director is interested in the story. And um, right now I'm assembling a packet to present to him. So we can look over it and, and figure out, you know, how we can get into pre-production. Mm, very cool. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So what will be your uh, overall involvement after you guys, uh, you, you know, you've pitched to the director and the director tells you what you need. What, what will you be doing? I will be the executive producer. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll, I'll, probably stay kind of in the shadows, um, but I'll be there during filming. We expect to film, you know, in Europe, probably in Prague. We're hoping for Prague. That's where our, um, that's where our movie takes place. So, um, so yeah, I'll just be on set. I I'm really kind of excited about it because of course this is our first um, movie, the first production. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see how everything unfolds because when I watch movies and I watch TV shows, sometimes I lose track of what's going on because I'm thinking about how, how this, how they did those scenes, how, you know, the characters know, or how, how they um, learn their lines and rehearse their lines. And so I really get to see all that, you know, how, how, how that all comes together. I'm curious. Um, obviously you're doing like a big budget movie, but if someone were to start a movie like with, pocket money and not have a budget not have a director maybe be their own director from what you've seen so far what would you recommend or how would you start start with a script or start with um filming just film as you go or you have any suggestions well, you definitely want to um, have an idea. You want to have it down on paper, um, pretty much organized, your story organized. Um, and then you want to have the basics down. You should have a script, of course. Um, and, um, and then from there, I mean, there's, there's a lot involved in the high budget movie making and the production. But a low budget, I don't know. I mean, I guess you just have a story. You find some friends that'll work for beer. <laughs> I know right. three oh, people that'll it. do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. There you go. They're right here. Everybody on this call. Yeah. There you go. We <laughs> have your actors right here. We've already got a cast. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I but I, I'm movie. really asking this so we can make a movie. Yeah. I think we all um, understood that, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know if you're a clarifying further that. Along in the process, right now, I have, right now it's I have two, two questions uh, about your production here. You said this is your first production. Do you guys intend to make other movies, or is this simply a documentary on what's happened so far? And two, follow-up question, 
Am I allowed to go to Prague with you? <laughs> I can be a key grip, I swear. <laughs> yeah, we can help. I can, I I can get those actors grip. in line. I can get coffee. I can do whatever is needed. All right. Okay. He's well, on scene fire control. Okay. Hey, yeah. We might need that. We there need could be fire a fire marshal over there. We might need fire support. How, how yeah, much absolutely. do you know about pyrotechnics? <laughs> I can I can light anything on fire. <laughs> but can you put it out? <laughs> bonus, bonus, I can put it out. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid extra for that. <laughs> yeah. That's two separate jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Josh yeah. is a marketing genius, so right. there's surely a role for him. That's right. I'll, I'll literally do whatever you want me to do if I could go to Prague, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you just tell me. I do have a question, though, Kelly, about, like, the timeline for a movie. That's one thing I've always been super interested in. From, you know, you're talking about the big budget pictures. Like, from the inception, somebody has an idea, puts it together until it's on the screen. What does that timeline look like? And I mean, obviously it can vary, but you know, can you talk a little bit about the timeline and how that all works? Um, it, it Typically, I think it takes about two years and um, I never knew why, you know, sometimes you see movies and they say coming, you know, spring of 2023 or whatever. And you're wondering, okay, well, the movie's already been made why why have they decided to you know wait a year to uh, to you know send it out to the theaters well a lot of that is because if you have multiple writers the writers are a part of a union and when you have multiple writers they have to go through typically they go through arbitration the guild you know reads the script as it was registered because you're supposed to register like each um each time you change writers. So you have to register it with the guild. So when you come to the end and you're getting ready to, um, to you know, you've done filming, post, post um, put photography, you know, then it goes to the guild and they have to, to determine if a creditor, if a writer has at least like 30% of their writing was um, maintained in the movie, then they get credit. And then this one, how much credit do they have? So I, so there is an arbitration process and I think that takes, you know, quite a bit of time, probably, you know, it could take, you know, six months for them to get through arbitration. Wow. So that's, I think that's part of it. Um, Cause typically, you know, what I was told is that as soon as we start uh, pre-production, the movie could be filmed within three to five months. So it doesn't take a whole lot of time, um, but I think that, you know, that process of them deciding who gets what, you know, percentage, you know, there's, there's all sorts of stuff. There's, there's production bonuses and there's, you know, all this stuff that really goes into, you know, determining all that at the end. I hear sometimes like TV shows, they make a pilot or something and then um, they have to sell it to publication companies like Netflix or ABC or something. So they have to make like a tour and say, here's a film or here's our show. Will you buy it and publish it? Yeah. Yeah. They, they definitely have to sell it to, I think distribution companies or like the streaming services and stuff. They'd have to pitch that. What I'm really excited about is um, we should, as soon as we, get with the director we should be able to go out to hollywood and maybe meet with some potential cast so that'll be fun hopefully that'll happen sometime spring maybe summer so. cool. but if i can make any i also i produced a song or i published we published a song i gotta talk about the song shame shame song.com shame <laughs> It's our song. That was fun too. Yeah. See, I'm a music publisher. I'm an executive producer on a movie. I'm like shit. <laughs> oh, that's an impressive resume. Oh. <laughs> and I get I'm much more intimidated it. by you now. What? Much more intimidated <clears throat> by you now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure we're at your level of entrepreneurship and professionalism this is 
We're, we're average. We're <laughs> average coders. <laughs> um, now this is highbrow this, stuff. You're right. This is what's going to catapult us to five million subscribers, though. <laughs> Having Kelly right. on here after it blows up, <laughs> we've got a real. We've got a real live producer and music. Bingo, bingo, bongo. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, right. Going to start sending me their scripts. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have to go through arbitration. We only have one writer. <laughs> <laughs> so we can we can produce this thing and have it ready by summer. <laughs> All right. Have your people call my people. <laughs> okay, we'll do. Yeah. We'll meet in Prague. <laughs> <laughs> we speak German. We need someone to speak German. Mm. Um, no? If I can yeah. learn German, does that count? <laughs> I have Duolingo. Give me, give me a couple months. I'll get there. <laughs> Google Translate. Just Duolingo. talk into this, and then I'll talk into it back, and it says it for me. <laughs> well, you may or may not know this, Kelly, but I am uh, somewhat of a YouTube uh, producer. Sensation. <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly helped me film my my last motivational video. Kelly was yeah. filming me the whole time. So she's also a cameraman and director as well. She directed right. and, and filmed the whole thing. I was an How do you find the time for all of this? I mean, <laughs> you're only one woman. How do you be so amazing? You know, it's just it's just who I am. I just can't can't explain it. It's just it's inherent in me to be <laughs> great. It off. Like just great go, it. you know? it's just, so it's, it's, it's genetic then. There's nothing we can do. We'll be average for life. But you <laughs> you were born this way. I was born. <laughs> you were born for greatness. That's right. <laughs> nice. You have any other questions for me? We don't want to eat up too much of your time. We don't get busy. <laughs> I gotta get back to work. You probably got uh, someone from Hollywood waiting on the other line right now. Yeah, tell Tom Cruise we said hi. <laughs> Ignore. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> no, I can't think of anything else. I think movie making—it's such a broad topic. It's it's hard to nail it down in 10, 20 minutes, but. I think uh, as you get more experience and maybe we can have you back on, you can give us an update about what's new. Like when you have some firm commitments from some people, that'd be interesting to update us on. When I can How actually... Fast? When I could actually name drop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When like cast or you can tell us how casting goes and when you actually get to set up different, you know, locations for shooting and stuff like that, how that works out. Yep. And we right can now. broadcast it to all six of our subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Get literally tens of you. <laughs> we got eight views so far on yet last week's uh, publication. So it's not, not nothing. Good. It's not doing so hot. Better than six. Almost to double digits. That's right. <laughs> You'll be trending soon. I know my mother loves the show, so. Oh, <laughs> tell her to tell all of her friends. Number one thing. Oh, no. <laughs> that means my wife was one of the views, too, so. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing great. <laughs> Let's do the math. There's four of us. Your okay. wife, my mother. That means we've got two... Organic views. Organic views. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to start posting the links to your other social media. Yeah. Check us out on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I've got a four minute warning on Zoom. All right. Bye, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Bye, guys. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah. I think Zoom is Kelly. forcing me forcing me to a, like a 40 minute time limit now because it says time left three minutes and 40 seconds upgrade 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 i think a great way to oh. end the episode would have like you in the middle of that sentence and it just cuts out <laughs> 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 something's happening <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I think it's telling me I got it. <laughs> One of these struggles is starting to hunt. <laughs> well, Can anything you guys else? Hear me? Oh, um, I am making a list of. <laughs> <laughs> I am making a list of future topics, so I don't want to spoil those on the the web the web show itself. But I've got like eight, well, that might give them something to look forward to, though. I've got like eight other topics. Like, uh, so one is like rental homes. Uh, mm-hmm. One is like trailer parks and tiny homes. Mm-hmm. One is a uh, your own clothing brand. Um, one is. You two, you two um, actually owned a store, oh, owned yes. a franchise. So, I mean, franchising is a huge topic and you yeah, can talk about your topic. your experience. Can we be special guests? Yeah, yeah. Cool. We introduce and ourselves no, uh, and then we introduce ourselves as special guests. <laughs> you know, and we don't think, pay uh, the special guests. I heard guests. some other special guests in those topics too. I, I thought of one other thing that I'm starting to do. Um, I'm trying to sell some of my unused material possessions. Like instead of a garage sale, just listing it on Facebook and Craigslist. Because I don't know about you, but I've accumulated a bunch of crap over the years. And yeah. Stuff that I thought I would use a lot, but never used. People, people make a good living out of that, actually. You can, a lot of people start like their... Uh, Amazon, the retail arbitrage that way. You just find items around your house that you can sell as used on Amazon or you sell it on Facebook Marketplace. And then they just kind of keep going with that trend and either get stuff that other people are throwing away or you find someone who's just trying to get rid of something, really cheap family member, and they just keep going that way with like garage sales and then flip it on there because people actually pay a lot more for it. Yeah, professional garage sale, that sounds cool. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know how much stuff you have hanging around your house that you don't use or rich you had never bought, but I've got a lot of that stuff. So I'll sell a lot of Caroline stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I got a lot of my wife's stuff that. I could probably put on Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> I've looked. Uh, I heard Scott mentioned something uh, to me last week, and so I read a little bit into it that I'd like to talk about just out of the uh, the sheer. I mean amazingness of the topic and where the world's headed um, but the metaverse people are buying advertising and real estate space within the metaverse and this virtual world now and uh, facebook um is investing i mean billions of dollars i mean there's a there's several companies investing billions of dollars worldwide to, mm-hmm. to continue to expand the met the metaverse and it's going to turn into essentially ready player one and uh, people are already purchasing real estate within this virtual world. I think that would be an interesting topic if we had just a little bit more data on it. Yeah, I'm aware of Second Life. That was like many years ago, uh, but yeah, I'm sure there's other stuff. stuff Yeah, Google Metaverse. It's pretty incredible what they're doing. Mm -hmm. There's, There's actually...